Hey guys, David Avalon with my friend here Spencer and I wanted to go over some common mistakes people make with the world's most common choke, which is the guillotine choke. People who even don't train will instinctively go for a guillotine when someone presents it to them. So I want to go over some of the common mistakes people make and uh, how to avoid them. So starting off from the, the closed guard, I'll demonstrate what a guillotine should look like. Another angle. All right, so now we'll break it down. When I'm starting from my guard, I always ideally want to start when he has his hands on the mat, right? So if he has his hands on the body, I can just clear the arms, and you know, you can clear it however you want. Usually, the best way is to go under the arms, wave out, and then as you wave out, pull with your guard so you can get him heavy in his hands. That's when you hear that smack, that means he's weighing in his hands. He's not gonna be able to pull away quickly. At this point, I'll now look to sit up. And I can sit up either way. I'll start from this side. And all I'm gonna do is like I'm gonna throw an elbow towards his head as I reach high here. Boom. Okay, and if you pay attention, there's a few things that happen. One, elbow will go to the mat. Two, I'll put my left leg on the mat here, and then three, I'm just going to reach over his shoulder and sit up. And once I'm about here, I'll go to my hand, and then I'll scoop my hips back just a little bit like this. Because now I have very good balance here. I'm not going to fall over anything, so I can stay at this position. And this is one of the places I see a lot of people mess up with from the very beginning, is that they never bring their, their hips back. So if he just gives me a little nudge right now, I'm going to fall. And if I don't get time to like lock up my grip, the, the game's over before you even start it. All right. So from the other side here, boom, I'm up. Now you're going to notice right away, I'm reaching for the neck. And to keep things simple for right now, I'm just going to do your classic guillotine, no arm inside or anything like that. So for that guillotine, I want to go in deep. All right. I want to try to keep my thumb pointed up so that the blade of the forearm, okay, is going to be under the neck. Now, the grip we're going to use, again, there's no like wrong grip, there's, you know, a bunch of different grips. So to keep it simple, I'm going to make a fist and then I'm going to cup at the edge of the fist, okay? So here, I want to have my hand just under the, the hammer of the fist here, all right? Avoid grabbing the wrist, which is another place people grab, all right, because it's easier for him to break the grip. All right, so hold at your fist. All right, so I'm here, boom, boom, okay? And again, if you can get this real deep, that's okay. You know, halfway in is fine. Now, here's a place where a lot of people make mistake is when they go back, all right? Now, when I go back, I don't wanna, I don't wanna do this, okay? Which is going straight back, all right? I wanna fall sideways over his head. Here, boom, okay? There's a few reasons for that, right? And we change the angle here. I'm wrapped around, I got my grip. Boom, all right? So first, when I'm doing the guillotine, I'm actually choking. What I'm trying to do, let me turn towards you guys, is twist like this, okay? So when you're flat on your back, this is an awkward motion to do. When you fall on your side, so like you're almost on your hip, this is much easier to do, okay? So when I have Spencer here, okay? Boom, I'm gonna fall, if his head's on my right side, I want my hips to be out to my left, all right? Because now I'm gonna crunch in here, boom, okay? To so lock that guillotine. So again, his head's here, I'm crunching in this way. And my goal is to try and bring my elbow across my ribs, all right? Because if you visualize this here, his head's in this pocket. If I'm able to bring my elbow over my ribs, I've literally guillotined him. His head is rolling off the mat now, right? That's never gonna happen, but that's your visualization right there. Okay, I'm trying to get this in. 
So one of the things that's going to help you is again, by crunching your body into him, you're putting more pressure on his head, all right? Because the guillotine choke, if you deconstruct it, it's just an arm across his neck and pressure going down here, okay? That will tap anybody out, all right? So when you're doing the guillotine here, what your torso is doing is just applying that pressure towards the back of his head, and then you, with your hands, you're trying to yoke up as hard as you can, okay? So again, from here, boom, boom, okay? And then there. Now, on the back side here, my legs also have an important job. They should always be pulling in, all right? Uh, sometimes I see people do the opposite, where they're pushing out, all right? But you want to pull in, and the reason why is one of the easier ways to counter guillotine is to stack up and get his hips high, right? Because as he starts getting his hips high, there's less pressure on the choke now because he's pushing with his upper body and with his head towards my shoulder. And you remember I told you I want to bring my elbow towards my ribs. If his head's pushing up, my elbow is going away from my ribs. And now I'm trying to choke like this, and I can't even close my arm. I'm not that flexible here, right? So this is a very weak crank versus being here where you know, I can really close up the grip here. So if he's able to come up to his feet, he's gonna be able to put a lot of weight with his head and raise up your elbow into this very weak position. All right, so by using your legs, here your goal is to keep control of his hips. All right, so when he tries to stand up, all right, you're giving him a little more resistance. He, he can still stand up you know, if he works in. There's things we can do which I can actually release and chop back down and then climb up again and keep pressure. But what you're also doing by keeping pressure with your legs is pulling your abs in because I want to crunch into them with that guillotine choke. All right, so when I'm in here, boom, I have everything set up. Boom. Okay. It's a full body crunch this way. And the last thing here is my head position. Okay? Sometimes, and this is, a, this is a big mistake, like huge, all right? That people go for the guillotine and they do this. And they're bridging, right? Because we associate the bridging with power because you do bring your hips in. But the problem with this for a guillotine, if we switch angles here, is that when I bridge, I expose the back of his neck, all right? And when my shoulder slides off of it, his head will pop out. All right, so instead, you want to be bringing your chin behind his neck. Okay, so one, it's going to pr protect that escape. But two, you're pulling yourself tighter into the choke. All right, so when I'm here, here, boom. Okay, you can see, like, as you cr crunch in, it's actually going to generate more choking force than when you uh, arch. So those are some of the common mistakes people make with the guillotine. Again, in order, one, when you're going to sit up, Make sure you scoot your hips out. Two, uh, with your grip, make sure that you grab at the edge of your fist, not at your wrist. Okay, three, you want to fall on your side towards his head, not going straight back. Uh, and uh, four, make sure you keep pressure with your legs to try to keep his hips down. And finally, five, don't bridge, crunching for your guillotines. If you like what you saw here, make sure you check out my course, which is at guillotinechokes.com. It's three and a half hours of guillotines and over 48 techniques. So if there's anything that's guillotine related, you're gonna learn it in that DVD series, which is also available online. Thanks and enjoy.